Yay. And I clock a little bit of time. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Mount Carmel Ministries. We're here at 2015 Grove Street, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Our pastors are Mitchell and Deborah Dent, and we just pray that they are enjoying themselves as they are on vacation this week. We pray that they are being refreshed, and God is just downloading things to them to bring back and give it to us. Hallelujah. I know he's going to watch this. <laughs> But if you are watching online over the airways, uh, we just welcome you to worship with us. And if you would like to leave us a message, please do so on our Facebook or YouTube page. And also hit the share button to share the broadcast so this message can go around the world. And if you are in need of a ride to get to church, we will pick you up. You can call 601 926 Eight four five five, and that number will be on our Facebook page as well. So if you want to get here, we can even get you here and get your ride back home. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have a scripture by Deacon Coleman, and then we'll have prayer. Good morning, Merry Christmas. Would you please turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40? And please stand. We're going to start at verse number 26. Isaiah 40, starting at verse number 26. Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse number 26. The word of God reads, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He called them all by name, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one failure. Why sayest thou, Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgments pass over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall early, fa early fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. May Lord have blessed the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come unto you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, first of all, for being you. Thank you for being our daddy, Father for always providing, for always knowing, for always being in control, for letting us know how much you love us, that you gave your only begotten son, your most awesome prize, your most loving only son, Father, to come and die for us, knowing that we are who we are and we would be who we would be, Father, but instead you still demonstrated your love that while we were enemies, you allowed Jesus to come and die for us. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life. Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, that the world through him might be saved, Father. And we love and thank you for that. We thank you for this day, for allowing us to come into your house to give you honor, glory, praise, to magnify you, to glorify you, and let you know how much we love you and appreciate you, Father, just because of who you are. We thank you also for the benefits that you give us, Lord, but mainly because of who you are. Father, if you never did anything else for you, for us, you've done enough. 
You let us know, Father, that we are valued, that we are worthy of you, Father, because you, you adore us, Father. You let us know that you chose us from the foundation of the world, and we appreciate you. We thank you for our children, Father, our grandchildren, our spouses, Lord. We just appreciate you because of who you are, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the pastors. We thank you for all of the prayer lines that, and the prayer warriors, Father, the intercessors, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for those who don't know you because today is the day that you have made and an opportunity for them to get to know you right now, Lord Jesus. And we praise and thank you for that. We thank you for every man and woman that's going to stand in your stead and preach the word today, Father, to let us know, Father, that we can come to you, we can call on you, we can ask anything in Jesus' name, Father, and you will let us have it in, as long as we're doing it in faith, Lord Jesus, knowing that you are the, Jesus is the res resurrection and the life, Father. He is the bread of life. He is the way maker. You're a way maker. You're a promise keeper, Father. You provide everything we need, Father, and we just praise you and thank you for it, Father. Lord Jesus, with you all things are possible. Without you, we can do nothing right, Father, and we just adore you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, just let us continue to look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, and let something be said today for those who don't know you. Come and ask, what must I do to be saved? And you are the answer. Father, when all is said and done, let us continue to walk like you walk, talk like you talk, be who you call us to be, and we'll continue to give you the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen, amen, amen. 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 And the church said what? Amen. 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 It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just one more time. Amen. Amen. And I just want to uh, it, it just wish y'all pastors an uh, outstanding vacation, a uh, time for them to rest and to be revived. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want everybody to know that I did send a uh, pastor a text, uh, especially when they was going to be down there in Florida. Uh, I told him to make sure, make sure. He put co-pastor on one of them roller coasters. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let her ride. <laughs> Let her ride. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, but it is a blessing it just to be here today. And then I count it uh, as an enormous opportunity. Oh, yeah. It's just whenever, you know, God has pre predained in, you know, this particular day, you know, for me to stand up and, you know, proclaim his holy word. Amen. And uh, the truth is that everybody has a sermon. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know that it's just a lot of times uh, uh, it was a, a lot of preachers like sitting around and then the pastor, you know, something had happened to him and, uh, and he was scheduled to speak a certain day. So the pastor didn't make it and then had, you know, you know, some ministers sitting there. So pretty much they were trying to determine who was going to speak. And went to the first minister, you know, said, hey, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> Second one said, I ain't got nothing, you know. And then the truth of the matter is you should always have some. Amen. If ain't nothing but just thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 You should always have something. And then when, you know, this particular uh, message that I have for you today, I remember uh, it just in our men's discussion, and it was a while ago, and we were discussing, uh, you know, rapture, you know. And then also, but the topic was uh, this, this uh, TV show, a movie that came out, uh, Left Behind. And then we were sitting here 
you know, talking about, you know, how can, you know, when, when this story came that people got raptured up, but then a preacher was left, you know? And then, then I, you know, I was just pondering on that, you know, how could you preach a word that you really, really didn't truly believe in? Amen. And so I was pondering on that. And then, so God gave me a message. But then it was a simple message. A passage of scripture that we all know about. But then he put another twist in there. You know, that, that was just so amazing. You know, how can you read something over and over and then all of a sudden you get a new revelation on it? Amen? Yeah, that's right. That is God. Amen. So let me open in prayer and uh, let's get started on this. Oh, gracious Father who are in heaven, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, Father, we just count this day as a good day. Thank you for just allowing us to be in your house of worship one more time. And Father, we invite your Holy Spirit into this service, and, and we want your Holy Spirit just to take over this worship service. And Father, we pray and claim as your word go forth, we know it will accomplish that which it was sent out to do. And Father, we understand that when your word go forward, that it'll change minds, it'll change mindsets, and for most so, it'll change hearts. And Father, we claim that right now in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, I would like for you to, uh, you know, stand as we read God's word. Uh, I, I will be coming from the book of John the fourth chapter, verses one through seven. Amen. It is a familiar passage, but pretty much God gave me just a simple twist on it. Amen. And it reads, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must need go through Samaria. Then came he to a city in Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the partial of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, set thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. And it just simply using for a title today is the woman at the well. Amen. Then if I was going to use a subtitle, it would be simply saying, this is my story. Okay. Amen. So, you know, it's just like I said, everybody has a story. Everybody has a sermon. Amen. And then, even when Jesus asked the disciple, you know, you know, who do you say that I am? Even though, you know, uh, it, it was answered by Peter, but then as we walk on this Christian journey, as we go through our trials and tribulations, and then had, as God continue, continue to show us that he's a faithful and loving God, we can write our own story, amen? amen, about what the Lord God means to me and have done for me, amen? amen. But, but today, I just want to expound on this woman at the well because, see, all of the focus and the attention was always put on this woman at the well. 
But truly, this is all about Jesus. Truly, this is all about salvation. And truly, this is all about the way that we should see things and that we should do a complete self-examination of our own selves. Amen? But I would like to start out, it just, it just with a story. Amen? Okay. Amen. The story is a father and son were out for a walk in a farmer's field. The son had brought a mirror de de detector with him and all of a sudden, it started to go off. They decided to dig up whatever was buried. And what they brought out of the ground was a metal bowl that turned out to be over a thousand years old. It was filled with over 600 gold and silver coins. They thought that they were just out for a normal afternoon walk. But they ended up finding a great treasure that day. Our story for today is very similar. It is a tale of a woman who went out on a normal day's activities to get some water from a well. And yet she found more than she ever expected. More than some silver and gold coins, this woman found eternal life. In the same way, perhaps, you might thought that today would be just a normal church day. Amen. But, but God may have something more in mind for you. Maybe this is the day that you, like the woman in this story, will find eternal life through Jesus Christ. Let us look together at the story of the woman at the well. You know, this woman, you know, it's a whole lot of people say a whole lot of different things about this particular woman. Amen? And since Jesus made it there at the sixth hour, pretty much that's noontime. And during this particular time, you know, most of the women, you know, came in early in the morning to draw the water. And people were saying, you know, uh, well, this woman coming at six because she had something to hide. Or else she wasn't proud of the life that she was living. But think about this. Could she have been tired of what I call two-faced people too? Amen. Amen. You know, like those people that are smiling in your face, and then as soon as you turn your back, you know that they saying all manner of things about you. Yes. Yes. Maybe she was just tired of the rat race, you know, of the circus that's going on. Mm -hmm. So then she just decided that, well, I just go in the hardest time of the day so I don't have to face that. And then that just would cause me of a story about three women that were sitting on the porch. And these three women were sitting on the porch talking about everybody. Everybody, everything, whether they knew the truth about it or not. You know? And then they talked all day. But then one woman, you know, she had to, uh, she had to leave because she had, you know, uh, you know, something to do at home. And Lord, she was pounding. Oh, Lord, I sure don't want to leave. And then, so then this woman, she got up, and then she said, okay, y'all, well, I'm going to have to go uh, because I know as soon as I leave, y'all going to start talking about me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Maybe this woman at the well was just tired of this old, you know, this you know, backbiting and all this stuff. And yeah, you know, she probably knew that she had issues. Amen. But then she just was tired of those two-faced people. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. But, but, but today, you know, uh, think about this. I know our first chapter said what? It's going to be the attention that Jesus gave her. Look, look at this. Now, I know verse 7, when Jesus sat on the well and the woman came up, 
You know, Jesus said, give me to drink. But it also in verse 8 said that because the other disciples had went away into the town to buy some food. Isn't this a perfect setup? Amen? Isn't it a perfect setup? Because when the Lord got ready to deal with her, he wanted to deal with her one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. Amen? He gave us some special attention. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And then we don't want to take it for granted that the fact that Jesus took time for this woman was remarkable. For seven said that she was a woman of Samaria. This, there were several good reasons why he did, he, or he shouldn't have had anything to do with her. The first thing is that she was a woman. And in that culture, women were not respected. Amen? Then on top of that, she was a woman of Samaria. The hated stepchildren of the Jewish race. The people we call the Samaritan came into being when the northern kingdom of Israel had been carried off into captivity by the Assyrians, took some foreigners and settled them into the land. The people that came about was a result of the mixing of people were, were called Samaritan. The Jews were so proud of their pure blood genealogy that they despised these people. Amen? Then verse 9, it elaborates on this sum. It calls her again the Samaritan woman. And then she even said, how is it that you ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The woman herself even thought it was extraordinary that Jesus would even speak to her. Amen? And this is what I call total racism going on. Amen? And then I used to, I mean, I mean these Jews hated these Samaritans so much that they wouldn't even must travel through the middle of the country. They would go on the outer edges. They would walk around, you know, the outskirts of, of the country because they didn't want to have nothing to do with them. Amen? And then it just, there's another amazing thing. Now, even in today's, you know, people, you know, can have racism, you know, simply because, you know, people are not the same skin color, you know, but, but they're, you know, all of them are the same color. They just ask, are you a Samaritan or not? You know, and still will discriminate, okay? But in addition to the woman being a Samaritan, you, now, some people say it that this woman had to be a rough looking woman. That's what they said. They said that she had to be rough. And <laughs> simply because, you know, of the lifestyle that she was living. Some people say that, you know, it just, you know, how sin would just ravage your countenance, would make you just look so old and everything, you know. But I thought about that. Was this a rough looking woman? But the truth of the matter is, five men thought she was beautiful enough to marry. <laughs> Amen? And then she's with a man now. So she can't be that bad looking. Amen? Amen? I mean, because people won't, because, uh, I, you know, it just made me look at, you know, sin itself. You know, if Satan is going to produce or present something to you, it ain't going to be rough or ugly. It could be just what you want. Amen? <laughs> Amen? So, 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 it's just regardless if she was rough looking or if, if she was the beautiful thing in the world, the problem is she had a problem. Amen? Then verse 18 said that she had five husbands. She had had five husbands. And she was currently living with a man who was not her husband. But it is extraordinary that despite all of this, that Jesus did talk to her. 
and took advantage of the opportunity that God gave him to share with her. This just magnified how gracious the Lord is and how much he loves every single one of us, no matter who we are. Amen? But I remember that I read in the book of Matthew, it was right around the 26th chapter, right around the 51st verse. You know, when they was coming to arrest Jesus, amen, and then one of his disciples had cut the ear, you know, off of one of the soldiers. You know, how even during this particular time that Jesus knew that he was on his way to the cross, but he took the time to heal this man's ear. Amen? I mean, we're talking about this was a nobody, and yet Jesus took the time and was to bury it in, in the act of being arrested and on his way to the cross to care for a man to restore his ear. Jesus cares about each and every one of us. But, but there are so many stories in the Bible that shows us that God cares for the least of us. Think about this. He cares about the servant of the enemy. He cares about the, what people will say, the rough Samaritan woman. He cares about the gifted thief who was being justly punished on the cross. He cares about the outcast servant woman who was about to die in the desert. On and on and on. You can read story after story to show how much he cares for you and me. But, but listen, if you ever wonder if God cares about you, all you need to do is to look at these stories in the Word. If he loved them, he loves you. Amen. Amen? If he cared about them, you can know he cares about you. Now, honest, some of us today may think we don't even must need this encouragement. But some of us today really do need to hear. You are wondering if God really know you or if he hears your prayers or cares about you. This message for you today it's for you. God does love you. God does care about you, just like he cared about this Samaritan woman. And there is the lesson. Also, every one of us as believers and church members, if God can care about each person like that, we should too. Amen? Because we are his disciples. We the one that represent him in this world. We should not be looking out for people like us. Amen? To invite the church. Amen? We should go into the highways, the byways. You know, we should pick, you know, what people may consider, you know, uh, the unloved. Amen? The people that people may consider not good enough. Those are the people, you know, because if God loves and cares about them, we should have the same mind and heart of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We all, we all, we all are saved by the grace of God alone. Amen? We all are saved by the grace of God alone. And the grace is the better for everyone who will call upon his name. It said, whosoever will, let them come. Amen. We see that this story of the woman at the well and the attention that she received from Jesus Christ. Now, the next thing is the opportunity she had. Jesus said in verse 10, if you knew the gift of God and who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. If you knew. If you knew. Who says this? I am, Jesus said. I am the son of God. The man that stood up in the middle of a storm and said, peace be still. Amen. And the winds died down. The seas sighed sound. Hey, that's who 
you was given a drink of water too. Amen. If you knew who you was talking to. Amen. That's the truth, man. You know, that, that we have entertained angels and didn't even us know. Amen. I remember a time years ago, I had flew out to Los Angeles. Uh, it's just to celebrate, you know, the birth of a grandchild. And, and boy, I had a wonderful time out there because, uh, I mean, you know, I love all my grandchildren, but this was the first son, grandson, you know. So, but then all of a sudden I'm flying back. And then, you know, when you come back, you know, you have to get a connection flight in Dallas, you know, it just get. So I'm flying on the airplane. And then it was this gentleman that was sitting beside me. Have you ever been beside someone that kind of looked familiar, but you just couldn't place them? You know? And then, so, we were just talking. Amen? We were talking about the weather. We were talking about the news. We were talking about, you know, all kinds of events that was going on. And then me being a big football fan, you know, you know we talked a little bit about football and everything. And then, then as we landed in Jackson, and then he got up, I said, well, you know, it was nice talking to you. My name is Minister Arthur Wilson. And then he said, my name is Deuce McAllister. I said, Deuce? <laughs> you know, this is a guy I fought law while he was at Ole Miss and when he was in the Saints and everything. You know, why didn't I recognize that this guy was sitting right beside me that I'm talking to? Man, and I felt so cheated. I mean, what would the conversations have been if I had known immediately who he was? Man, I could have went all the way back to high school. All in old Miss, you know, why he was, you know, running back. All at the same. Man, I could have had. Boy. Think about this. If I had known, then I hit myself. Well, why didn't I first introduce myself when he first sat down? Amen. And then I'm saying that. That's why we have entertained, you know, have you ever just talked to someone and never got their name? Then you say, oh, there's something so special about that person. I mean, had a good conversation, good college, godly conversation, spiritual conversation. But why didn't you close the deal? Amen? That's why I would say that you could have been entertaining an angel and then you must know it. And then Jesus told this woman, if you knew, if you knew the gift of God and who it is says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Wow. Mm. This woman, unknowingly to her, had stumbled across a treasure. It was not just some guy who was sitting there at the well that day, but Jesus the Messiah. It was no co coincidence that, that he was there, but God had ordained her to meet him there, to give her the incredible opportunity of knowing him and to be saved. She did not know at that moment the gift of God that he was about to set before her. Just a normal days of activity, going by her normal day's business. Amen? And see, that's why I always say to each and everybody, you don't have to go out of your normal everyday way to see what God is working on. Because when God, God will put it right in your path, Amen. 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 Because, you see, you're so busy trying to get to E and L, you're missing on the A, B, and C. You ain't got to go looking for nothing. 
Because God would put it. This woman was thought that she was getting around everybody in the morning. But Jesus met her right at noon. Ain't that so amazing? Amen. He met her at noon. And then, it's interesting that Jesus used the term the gift of God to describe salvation. Romans 6 and 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is exactly what Jesus went on to say that he could offer her. Amen? He said that whoever drinks of the water that I would give him shall never thirst. But the water that I would give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. This woman had an incredible opportunity. The gift of eternal life was sitting right in front of her. Wow. Wow. Amen. She had come out just doing her routine chores to get water, just going through the motions of everyday life, but all of a sudden the opportunity to have eternal night presented itself. Maybe you're like that. You have been going through the motions of everyday life, getting up every day, going to work, doing whatever you have to do, eating, drinking, living, breathing, making money, paying bills. But God is saying there is something more to you than that. There is more than just life. You can ask people, hey, what's going on? Just life. What? Just life. Hmm, okay. But there is more than j just life. There is eternal life. A relationship with God that he designed for you to have with him, a new perspective on life, a new purpose as you work from kingdom for his kingdom here on earth and all the eternity in heaven to enjoy him. Amen? Amen. Can I ask you this morning, do you know the gift of God? Amen. Do you know the yes. gift of God? Because it's just like our previous text said, it said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen? Wages of sin. What is the wage? I mean, the wages of sin is just like you digging your own grave with the shovel, and then someone still going to kill you. What sense do that make? If you're going to kill me, I ain't going to dig my grave. Okay. Amen? That's the wages of sin. That means that you're working, you know, just to kill yourself. But the gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift. It ain't nothing you can earn. It ain't nothing you can boast about, you know, by all your way of doing. A gift, all you have to do is ask for it. Amen? But, but that opportunity that we have is in front of you today. You may, may have just been like the woman at the well, just going through your daily routines, living life from one week to the next, from one paycheck to the next, from one weekend to the next. But God is saying to you today, there is an opportunity for something more. There is eternal life before you. You can know that your sins are forgiven and that you are going to live in heaven forever. You can know that you have the relationship with God that you have been looking for all your life, which means and can truly satisfy you. You can be part of serving God in his kingdom in a ministry that will be fulfilling in life and will lead to an eternal reward. If you have never received it, there's a great opportunity before you today. The gift of God is before you today. This is the same opportunity this woman had. But, but first, before she could have this opportunity, she had to face a problem first. She, she had a problem. Okay. Amen. And some of you today, 
need to face up to the same thing. Amen. We got a problem. Mm. Amen. Let's talk about the problem she faced. Oh, it's already up there. All right. Jesus actually brought up the problem she faced because he knew it was important. Her sin separated her from the opportunity God had for her to receive eternal life. We need to realize the importance of this. This was obviously no small thing or Jesus would not have brought it up. Here, this woman was with the opportunity to receive eternal life and she wanted it. And Jesus said that he could give her this water that will spring up into eternal life. And she said in verse 15, sir, give me this water. She wanted this eternal life. She was ready for it, or so she thought. But there was a problem. And the problem was her sin. Jesus said to her in 16, go call your husband and come here. Why did he say that? He didn't, I mean, some people may say, well, he didn't want to save her without a husband. He wanted them both to be saved together. That's a nice idea, but that's not why. Look at the woman's response. She said, I have no husband. Then look at what Jesus said. You have correctly said I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. This is this you have said truly. Wow. What in the world was Jesus doing here? Amen. But, but here this woman seemingly ready to receive eternal life. Why would he say something like that to her? Jesus said that to the woman because he knew she could never have eternal life until she faced up to her sins against God. The problem that she had was that she had fragrantly disobeyed God with her lifestyle. Jesus said that to this woman because he knew that she could never have eternal life until she faced up to her sin against God. The problem that she had was that she had, she had just totally lived outside of God's will. Amen? She had had five husbands. She had broken God's laws. She is now living in immorality with yet another guy who wasn't even one of the five. She had totally disobeyed God regarding marriage and morality, and that was her problem. Her sin had separated her from God. We need to understand that the problem this Samaritan woman faced is the same problem we all face, our sin separated us from God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Then we go to the book of Isaiah 59 and 2 says of all of us your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. We were all born with a sin nature and we have each other chosen to disobey God. And you can't have eternal life until you face up to your sin and deal with it. Amen? You can't just sweep your sins under the carpet and pretend that they never happen. Or worse yet, you just can't keep doing the same sin if God's, as if God doesn't care. The truth of the matter, God does care. Amen? He is a holy God and cannot abide sin in his presence. Mm. Jesus shows us that, that he wouldn't have brought this up here unless it was extremely important. You see, this is just like a husband. Or you could say a wife. Saying this. I want to be right with my wife, but I don't want to start running around with other women. Amen? Well, this is not going to happen, is it? 
It is the running around with other women that destroyed the man's relationship with his wife. He doesn't have a hope of fixing the relationship until he stopped doing what destroyed it. Amen. We're saying this simply because sin is a thing that is destroying your relationship with God. Amen? And in the same way with us in God, sin by definition is destroying God. It is saying, I don't want to obey you. I want to do what I want to do. When you are saved, you admit that your choices to sin were wrong. And you come back to God to obey him as your Lord. And the way he designed you to, when you turn away from sin and turn back to God, that is what we call repentance. Repentance means stop doing what you're doing. Turn your back, make a, is it a 360? 180. 180. Oh, because a 360 will bring you right back there. Right? Okay, you're going to make a 180, and you're going to look that sin the way God look at sin. And when you look at that sin, then you're going to think about what it cost Jesus on the cross. You ain't going to be able to stand it. Amen? Amen. But this can be painful facing up to your sin. But that is part of the genuine salvation. Conversion is, is, not, the, is not the smooth, easygoing process some men think. It is a wounding work. Of course, it's breaking up the heart. But without wounding, there is no saving. Where there is grafting, there is cutting. And this is saying, but must be done by the wound. Amen. Uh, and then we always talk about, you know, the discipline of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you know, and then the Holy Spirit will come in. Amen. Uh, but, but, but now, but whatever else is in there, you see, the Holy Spirit is going to expose now. You see? Yeah, it's going to drive it out. Amen. So see, so see, initially, that's what we call the wounding work now. You see, see, it's going to be a struggle going on because the Holy Spirit it ain't going to go for that stuff. You know, it's going to have to get exposed. And then it's just so amazing uh, that when I gave my life to Christ, truly gave my life to Christ, you know, and then, then after all the junk I had in me, you know, when it started getting exposed, and then I'm, I'm so thankful that someone explained it to me. He said, yeah, it's going to have to get exposed. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have, you know. So, so I was so glad when it was just finally, you know, ugh. then every time something got exposed, no weight came off my shoulder. Weight came off my shoulder. And then I was so determined, you know, after all them weights came off my shoulder, I said, well, if I have to go through anything else moving forward with my life, it's going to be for the sake of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because I'm through doing dumb stuff. Amen. Amen? Through doing dumb stuff. Amen? that I know that was wrong. All right. So, so 1 John 1 verse 8 9 said that if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not with us. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't deceive yourself. Don't try to act like you haven't sinned and that you're so good that you deserve a place in heaven. You don't, and I don't neither. The Bible said all have sinned and have fallen short of God's glory. We all sin, and we need to face up to it. God can cleanse you from your sin. He can make you as white as snow. He can forgive you. Amen? Now, see, some of us may be on this road, some of us may be even further down this road, but, but this is to the multitude, okay? So if you're sitting here and you're hearing this, you got to know that God will forgive you of your sin. All you got to do is just come and, come and just call on his name and be willing to turn from your wicked ways, amen? But... 
But for that to happen, you must confess your sin like the Samaritan woman. You must come face to face with the problem of your sin in order to have eternal life. Amen. Now, we're going to talk about the solution that she trusted. This woman's sin was a problem. But what was the solution? The, the solution she discovered was Jesus himself. After Jesus confronted her about her sin, she attempted a diversion with a controversial question which people often do, by the way, about where, do, where should they worship? Amen? Then she was talking about where my family worship in the mountains. Then they talk about, you know, worshiping in Jerusalem. Okay. And then Jesus said, well, you know, you know the latter is what you said is correct, but for those who are going to worship God, going to have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 I don't care where you think you're doing or what you, you better worship him in spirit and in truth. Because God is the spirit. Amen. And you got to worship him in spirit and in truth. The church building ain't going to never save nobody. And I mean, I mean, you can worship on the mountain. Under the mountain, in the mountain, wherever you think you can go, but you better be worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. And then in the book of John 14, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to prepare a place for them in heaven. And he said, You know the way where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how do we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but through me. Jesus himself is the way. He is the solution. He is the answer. We are to put all our faith in Jesus. Amen. You see, there is an important difference between just knowing about Jesus and really trusting him to deal with your sin. It is not just believing intellectually, but in intellectual assent says that you believe a fact about something. Saving faith really trusts in that for yourself. For example, see, I know y'all was asking, uh, why do I have a chair up here? Okay. This is a chair. All right. Now, you may ask me, do I believe that this chair can hold me? Amen? And then I say, well, I really do believe that the chair can hold me. Amen? Because it looks sturdy. You know, it can hold me. Okay? But as long as that chair is sitting right there, that chair ain't doing nothing for me, right? I don't care how much I know about that chair. As long as it's sitting there, it's just a chair. It ain't doing nothing for me. Now, but now we're talking about a fact, right? Fact is you think the chair holds you up. But now we're going to talk about trust. Until I go and put my weight in this chair. <sighs> Trust it enough to hold me up. Come on, come on. You see? You see, there's a lot of us that has been introduced to Jesus Christ. Come on, come on. We know that Jesus died on the cross for sin, right? Right? Yes. We know all the things, the stories that the Bible you know, say it about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. But yet and still, we don't trust him enough to put all our cares in his hand. We don't trust him enough to put our life in his hand. You can quote every scripture you want. You can talk in tongues all you want. 
You can do it. But until belief becomes trust. Amen? Then I can recline in this chair. Amen? That's right. I can rest. Amen? See, you can believe whatever you want. But this faith calls that you have to trust. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you call upon his name, you know, for certain, you know, you, still, you got to trust that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. Amen? And that's to trust, you know. You got to trust. I mean, believe that the chair could hold me and let it. You got to let it hold you. Yeah. Amen? And this is precisely how a lot of people are with Jesus. Some of you may be like that today. In your mind, you may know the fact that Jesus died for everyone or that Jesus can save you, but it is just something you know about. Like the person who believes the chair can hold them up, but the trust is you have never personally trusted Jesus to forgive your sins and save you. There's a big difference between belief and trust. Amen. You see, see, I'm saying all this stuff because see, see what sparked all this was, you know, you know, when my brother and I were talking about, you know, this left behind stuff. How could that happen? How can you know all these facts? You can quote all these things. You can do all this. But you never trusted what you were saying. Wow. But Jesus himself is the solution. He is the chair in the illustration. He is the way to heaven. If you are going to be saved, you must trust what he did on the cross for you, not just believe in him in your mind. You have to trust him. Recline in him. Trust what he did to save you. Not anything you can do. Stop saying you believe that Jesus can save you and let him save you. Amen. Trust your life to Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus was the solution for the Samaritan woman and he is the solution for you. Amen. He cares for you just like he cared for the Samaritan woman. He wants you to have eternal life. But just like that woman, he needs you to know that your sins have separated you from him. But that he is the answer. He died on the cross to pay for your sin so that if you will repent of your sin and trust him, he will be your Lord and Savior right here today. Amen. You may have come out here today just for a normal Sunday thinking about what you're going to do for the rest of the day. Some of you may have pot roast cooking at home, thinking about what you're going to eat. Some of you done already made your plans for 5 and 6 and 7 o'clock this evening. Amen? Just old, normal Sunday. But Jesus has something much bigger in mind. Just like the woman at the well, if you will Admit your sin and trust Jesus as your Savior. You can be washed from all your sin. Get a real relationship with God and eternal life in heaven. And like the woman, you can say, this is my story. Amen? Amen. Some of you have been standing and looking at Jesus long enough. You've been playing this game. You've been playing this, uh, you know, uh, people always talk about, I leave church because I got hurt at the church. Church hurt. Okay? You know, you've been playing all these games. Oh, it's better service over here. It's better. You think that you go to a church for service? Or you go for church to be thankful to God for what he's doing for your life? And, you know, all, I mean, come on now. I mean, uh, we just need to get real with these things. Amen? Amen. You, you know, so we just need to get off the sideline with all the excuses why we don't do stuff. 
Okay? Hey, man. I mean, then I've heard people even talking about, well, I don't go to church because I don't think they want to tie. Oh, wait a minute. That's a relationship between you and God. I mean, that was, I mean, come on. If you don't want to pay tithes, just, just come on to church anyway, you know? That's all right. The word still can go forward. No, let God talk to you about that. Oh, oh. I know, I know. I, I can say a couple things that Pastor probably wouldn't want to say. But it's time for you to actually recline in Jesus Christ and trust your salvation to him. Amen. You can do that right where you are. Pray and ask Jesus for forgiveness of your sins and come into your life as your Lord and Savior from this day forward. Amen. This is my story. And then this is for each and anyone that's sitting out here today. We offer Christ to you. Just if everybody would stand. We offer Christ to you today. There's a song that said that he will make your life brand new. And he will take good care of you. It's a lot of times, you know, it's just like we said that, that we've just been looking and we... It's just like buying, it's just a car. You know, people will say, hey, just look at the car and go around and kick the tires. A lot of people have been kicking the tires on this salvation question long enough. Been kicking the tires on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ long enough. You even must got the owner's manual of the car. You know everything else, I mean everything about the car. It's just like you got the owner's manuals, you know, with with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have the Bible. But it's time to get in the car and start driving. We've been talking too long enough. We've been going through the motions too long enough. It's time to truly offer Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior today. And then even, you know, if at one time you did accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and then somehow you just drifted away well that's okay because he still is standing here waiting for you he said he'll never leave you or forsake you amen you can come back and he will restore you it's just like you had never left and i think about that with the prodigal son the only thing you know that that the prodigal son ha uh, had to do was just change his mindset and just come to his senses. Amen. Amen. And then, if you're looking for a church home, we have church services here at, at Mount Carmel every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Bible school starting at 9.30 and services starting at 11 a.m. every Sunday. We'll love to see you. We'll love to have you. Yeah. We have just some great people here that's on fire for God. I mean, that would just take you on their arms and encourage you and, you know, and, but that's what we have to offer. And I just want to thank you. And this is my story. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. It's time and offering time. Amen. 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 <clears throat> you know, um, have, have you ever received something and uh, it just kind of just 
blew you away, kind of over and beyond. You know, you expected one thing and you got a whole lot more. You know, and you just say, wow, I just, just, it just kind of just blew you away. You know, maybe you paid for a service of some type and you received a whole lot more than you paid for. And you just say, oh, this is just a blessing. It's just a blessing. You know, maybe you, you order something, you know, maybe from Amazon, two day, three day shipping, you got it in one day. And you say, wow, you know, I, I got it early, you know. And you say, that's just a blessing. And you know, you know, uh, you know, God is like, we serve a, a, a over and beyond, a, a, a over and beyond kind of God. And you know, a, a, a more than enough God. And uh, you know, a lot of people don't believe that, but, but I'm one that do believe. And I know we got a lot of uh, church members here that believe it also. But I want you to turn me to the book of John chapter six. And a very familiar story there, uh, where Christ feeds the 5,000. And I just want to read a couple of verses there and just talk about it real quick. And this verse is uh, 12 and 13. Um, and it says, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up their fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And you know what's going on here, Christ, they feed 5,000, they teach 5,000 men, we know a lot more than just men there because a lot of people have followed Christ over and, uh, and, and Christ said, hey, sit down and let, let's feed them. And you know, just doing a little research, five barley loaves, a barley loaf, they say it's equivalent to like pita bread and they, and they say it's like flat, about maybe an inch thick at most, say maybe equivalent to maybe a slice of our bread. And they say the fish wasn't even any bigger than probably like sardines. And say maybe equivalent to a little boy's lunch. Some people say it, some read, some of them say maybe, maybe selling it maybe. But it wasn't a whole lot, but, but they took up 12 baskets left. So this is stuff that he could feed his disciples for a week or two, maybe even more. They fed 5,000 people with what they had with the one with five and two, and they got 12 baskets. So it's a whole lot. This is what I'm talking about over and beyond, more than enough kind of God. And see, that reminds me of, of a verse in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, you know, about talking about our God, they would do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. That's the kind of God that we serve. It's tithing time and offering. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for the word that was shared to today. And Lord, as we continue with worshiping you through tithes and offering, we pray, Lord, for the tithes and offering that are about to receive right now. We pray, Lord, for the givers, not for what, the, the, what they're doing, but for the, not for the amount they're going to offer, Lord, but for the condition of their heart. And Lord, we pray for the ones that want to give but have not at this time. And Lord, we pray, Lord, what is received, that, Lord, that this church, Lord, we'll be good stewards. And we, Lord, we do what you have us to do with it. Lord, we love you and we just thank you. We lift your name on high. And we say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you bring your tithes and offering from the rear of the church around the walls, please? Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>